footwear industries towards the additive manufacturing moving towards the additive manufacturing technique and compared to traditional manufacturing they are having the advantage and flexibility towards the design and uh, other aspects also see footwear 3d printing is set to grow a 6.3 million hour revenue opportunity in this next 10 years so we are they are having a vast opportunity revenue opportunity even you can even you can even you can uh, join i mean you can if you have the knowledge of these particular techniques all these things you can even uh, get opportunities in the footwear companies also uh, who are implementing additive manufacturing additive manufacturing see you know this company some of these companies have added us a reebok under armor new balance and uh, all these companies so especially what i am going to discuss is so what kind of techniques they are going to implement so what kind of materials they are going to use for the manufacturing of or for the producing of their footwear products say whereas adidas dls direct laser centering direct laser centering Uh, and uh, Nike, Nike, they are going to have the SLS technique, selective laser centering. So, and also Nike is also implementing STM. You may not know some kind of techniques also, but uh, uh, some extrusion based uh, technique this is. So here the carbon. So they are going to use Adidas, they are going to use polyurethane. Polyurethane is the material for their footwear manufacturing. Whereas Nike is going to use both thermoplastic polyurethane and nylon powder to produce the footwear, uh, footwear products. And here SLA by technique, SLA technique. We know uh, SLS is having the the particular machinery or uh, this particular technique is useful to the select the various materials it, it is capable of produ producing various kinds of materials so whereas composites polymers are different types of here nylon powder is going to be used and uh, So what kind of uh, so in the one part i mean one product we may have the different uh, sub parts or uh, minor parts which, which is going to be assembled together to make a com complete or assembly or a complete product so here polyurethane mid soles so they are going to use this material to, to produce the mid soles and uppers so here uh, some kind of uh, upper part of the footwear they are going to produce by using polyurethane. So everything. So other parts, cleats, heels, so outsoles. So these are the sub, part, sub parts are in, the, in uh, different parts which are included in the footwear. Say a rubber, SLA technique, uh, stereolithography, foam labs. This particular company, three day company, company name is Form Labs, which which is going to be supply this. So Adidas, Adidas, what uh, lattice mass produced midsoles. So this is the application. Adidas, Adidas company is going to be produced by using additive manufacturing midsoles. They are going to produce. So what kind of uh, the uh, digital light synthesis the the correct technique name is digital light synthesis. Note down, I may mistake in the initial. So digital light synthesis, this is the technology and a technology provider, carbon, material, polyurethane. So generative design, digital data, generative design. So they have given a statement uh, from this, from their experiences. So this is, these are the case studies. These are the case studies of the 3D printing techniques. 
or uh, additive manufacturing what am i rapid prototyping they we can call it as any one of the name but uh, most of the uh, it is only limited to prototypes we, we, we call it as rapid prototyping if you have the application of uh, functional products we call it as you can call it as additive manufacturing or 3d printing name by name so although it was the latest major footwear company to make a public move to the 3d printing of the why these people are not coming at the right time i don't understand i don't allow uh, from now onwards already 15 min 12 minutes have been went out so adidas you know brand by by brand name so this company has already produced how many pairs are you, is the screen is visible anyone please sir in best should be conversion sir please can you screen share hello hello sir chapan mic break out sir light ka how many pairs they have produced already any means at least one lakh pairs sir okay right and just i have checked out whether you are in attempty mode or not okay so already so far this company adidas company by using uh, this particular technique they have produced 1 lakh pairs so far uh, plastic mid soles via 3d technology by using carbon digital light synthesis so this is a type of layerless poly photopolymerization so let uh, maybe this is new era this is new era they have implemented uh, now the company has confirmed its ramping up the production is million of units in coming years so in the coming years we are having they are, they are uh, thinking about to improve lot uh, by using this particular 3d printing technology adidas already has access enough to printers from carbon to make many pairs of 3d printed sneakers so all this uh, what are, what are their objectives they have mentioned the process uses a special type of durable and flexible liquid resin so the material uh, i mean photos in photopolymer resin that is in the form of liquid phase in the form of flexible and liquid resin so this is the combination of thermoset polyurethane and photopolymerization agent so they are using again uh, uh, mixing of uh, different uh, materials that is uh, polymer materials if you say this is the component or this is the footwear product they have they are going to buy so future craft through 4d project adidas first venture into 3d printing so their first pair produces the upwards of 300 dollars so about 300 dollars means around i think so 21000 rupees where took one pair of shoe that is footwear it is around 21000 of price so they i mean initially they have produced for this cost so the price has been dropping so they are going to i mean uh, yeah, the, their price is going to be dropped not for lack of demand for the uh, scale economics coming into play that, that means what they are going to say is so they are having demand for their product but the price they are they are going to low, lower their price because uh, lowering the price of the materials hardware accessibility so if the hardware uh, producing of this particular footwear product if the uh, hardware components are available at cheaper rates or low cost so then hence uh, they can produce more number of products with less cost so next company uh, the nike nike you know this also a familiar name to you mass customized uppers custom football cleats so football players shoe for the football players so those 
particular products have been made they have used deposit modeling sls also sls techniques so technology provider eos and prodves so we may not we we if we go through the in detail we may understand so uh, polyurethane ppu next digital data biometric data how they have they take this uh, took this data is by, by bare legs bare legs they have scanned the data so by the impression of leg by the impression of leg and scanning of uh, scanning of the our foot and there they have taken the input data for producing these components so the input data they have taken from the impressions of the customer see again they have given the uh, some talk they are talk about the 3d printing technology so nike was among the first companies intense use of 3d high performance product development so using this technology quick iterations of functional parts the highest profile pa projects run by nike is the nike vapor laser telon so this is the project they have handled so far the first 3d printed football cleat especially designed to provide the optimal traction so this is the surface to uh, surface to foot and traction this the, this is track, traction force the force which is uh, spread over the surface we call it as traction force on the football and the football trough to help the athletes maintain their drive stance longer so for the athletes so this is exclusively for the sports sports people they have designed they have taken up the project nike vapor high quality cleat developed by the companies i call it a cleat developed by the company shuttle program 3d printing allowed to test iterate create shapes not possible with the traditional manufacturing process so uh, what are the limitations in the traditional manufacturing process they are going to um, change i mean they are going to transform into uh, 3d printing technology so by that by this by implementing this technology the uh, whatever may be lagging uh, term, uh, aspects in the traditional manufacturing they are come to overcome the this product problems arising in the traditional manufacturing so which helped the push limits of the innovation faster in the both the cases sls process was used selective laser sintering process have been used along with the proprietary material selection so all these things uh, they have introduced about the materials so this is the other company we may not familiar with this name new balance so about this they have again used the technology of sls selective laser sintering and stereolithography <coughs> liquid based poly liquid based for rapid prototyping technique uh, sla technique sls technique is powder based rapid prototyping technique so here also gener generative designs and biometric data so i think you have understood uh, what i am going to say is uh, here what kind of uh, what revenue they have invested how much quantity of revenue they have invested what uh, technology they have used so far what they are going to uh, what are their expectations in future about their companies they are this is the things they are discussing here 
so these are the under armor the here also so as a mechanical engineer we may feel proud we are having every part of our life we are having the application so if you are knowledge enough you are having wonder wonder uh, opportunities you can find opportunities everywhere don't uh, focus i mean uh, don't uh, go for the software uh, i mean uh, design software we are also having design software don't go for other other uh, jobs why because if you find this jobs if you are going to have the experience in this particular aspects so you are you are going to pay high salaries even than the software engineer so initially we may have less salaries don't worry about that so now onwards uh, search in the different websites so even uh, even reebok is a company they are going to maintain a website so what projects they are going to handle open this website and what project what project they have handled what the project they have completed please search in that um, blog in that blog what are they they are maintaining uh, what are the strength they are maintaining so see here they have used the technology of liquid drawing so here uh, pneumatic material extrusion via robotic arm so this is the i mean this is the technology they are going to use uh, after that they going to implement so pneumatic uh, extrusion means with the help of air so dasf polyurethane so uh, you, you must search uh, what i'm going to say is if you find a name new a uh, new name or which is not familiar uh, if you are, uh, which are not familiar uh, by you so search and uh, search for the properties of material so for example dasf polyurethane material so search the search the what are the mechanical properties for this particular material so it is having tensile strength tensile strength elongation what is the elongation what is the um, uh, what what are maybe the uh, modulus of elasticity ens modulus so everything every parameter you have to check for this particular material so when you uh, when you at uh, really if you are interested in, in uh, for example a footwear company if you are going to be a mechanical engineer in the footwear company so easily you can crack the interview so so far you have used these materials so if uh, you can convince the interviewer by your knowledge so uh, what are the mechanical the immediately they will ask so i uh, so I, i have gone through your uh, project sir uh, if then you can say why because i am making you to attend the interviews uh, which which area you have interested so if you are interested in real manufacturing also you are having a, a, a opportunities if you are really interested in uh, design so go through the design projects so in the reebok itself design department will be there manufacturing department will be there so you have to generate the cad model cad model in the this particular footwear company so how to generate the cad model footwear footwear cad model so sometimes they will take uh, that impression biometric impression input data sometimes they are going to even though they will take the impression of the particular uh, footwear Uh, they will again modify they will they are going to modify in the again uh, in the system so what uh, you have to know get the knowledge of this particular materials and design aspects also so limit opportunities are not limited if your knowledge is limited you are not having any opportunities keep it in mind about this point so let me show a small visual visualization about the manufacturing of uh, this footwear by additive manufacturing additive manufacturing technique c1 if you are uh, a create if you create interest in this particular uh, manufacturing technology go through it good factory this is your sauce 
oxygen can be given to it. That allows us to have the object grow. What's really interesting about this collaboration with carbon is that we're seeing a convergence. first started with the idea of thinking about it, it was a guidebook to set us on a path. Speak to mindset, philosophy, and triumph. We're always bringing in new influences, new ideas, and new collaborations. 3D printing, for example, was one of these new technologies that really had unlimited possibilities. You know, the initial problem was, okay, can we actually make a running shoe out of 3D printed material that really works and works well? So when we started thinking about doing 3D printing, we wanted to use liquids, because liquids give you the most flexibility in material design. I think of light as a chisel. Light triggers the solidification of the liquid, but oxygen inhibits it. That allows us to have the object grow. What's really interesting about this collaboration with carbon is we're seeing a convergence of a completely new manufacturing technology. We're going to scale it with the best industrial partner in the business. And we're able to deliver tens of thousands and maybe in the hundreds of thousands and into the tens of millions. And that's clear in front of us. We have this amazing opportunity to innovate the printing process, the liquid rising. And growing in that context can give you new design thoughts you've never had before and new performance capabilities that wouldn't be possible by traditional manufacturing. This three-dimensional mesh structure, it's a lattice, it's a matrix. A web of individual elements. Each one of those. If you are, uh, if we, if you are really want to produce by traditional manufacturing technique, it takes a lot of time. This particular mesh type of uh, foot uh, sole is tuned specifically for a purpose. These lattice structures behave quite differently than anything we've dealt with before. They're much different than foam. Now we have every individual area of the shoe to work with. It is a completely new horizon for us to venture. We really want to make a shoe that's the size of our own. That same shoe for someone who's 180 pounds versus 100 pounds has got to be different. We can go in and every single cell and so versus 100 pounds has got to be different. Say they are going to analyze here how this particular uh, foot is going to be the how much load load is going to be applied, what kind of stresses is going to be developed. They are going to analyze first, then they are going for the manufacturing technique. So if you are uh, if you are going to manufacture this product, first you have to complete design part. That design part includes both the modeling as well as analysis part. They are going to analyze where this uh, load is going, maximum load is going to be acted, and uh, how, where we have to maintain the high strength. Where we are going to maintain the some elastic nature. So everything we have to check in the system software by using uh, CAD CAD tools. We can go in and every single cell and engineer that exact cell to do exactly what someone needs to do just for them. That's fascinating. That's going to change uh, how we create products and certainly how consumers experience products. And I think that's how we see something like Futurecraft 4D playing into the life of an athlete. I would say this is just the very beginning. And you know, it sounds silly and cliche, but who knows, man? I don't, I, I don't know what's next. And that's what's great about going to work every day. Footwear manufacturing really hasn't changed over the last 30 years. In fact, if you walked into a factory 30 years ago or you walked into one next week that was making footwear, you'd see essentially the same thing. Every shoe from every brand on the market. So these are the traditional manufacturing technique, uh, which is used and passed by the company Reebok, named it as Reebok. The market created using molds. 
shoes are expensive because molds are expensive. What is he is saying is the man the producing of molds is very expensive uh, in a uh, very expensive whereas the product cost is very the total product cost will be expensive because of molds. So in this particular three D printing technique, we are going to eliminate the molds directly. We are going to print by using CAD models. What if we created a new process to make shoes without molds? We'd get a lot faster, and we'd change what we make, how we make it, where we make it, and who we make it with. This is the Liquid Factory Lab. It's unlike any other shoe lab anywhere. We're using state-of-the-art manufacturing software and machinery to build a system that literally draws shoes in three dimensions. We had to give our machine something to draw with. That's the liquid part of Liquid Factory, a special high-rebound liquid material made for Reebok by BASF. The bottom of your shoe is called the outsole. It provides traction and durability and hasn't been updated in 30 years. We decided to innovate the outsole with the liquid factory process. We had the machines draw in layers, and this allows us to build walls of high rebound material, layer by layer, to create a framework for the shoe. We fill that frame in with a high energy material to create the first ever energy return outsole. It has twice the energy return of a typical rubber outsole. We program the machine to keep drawing and add wings to either side. The wings stretch and mold themselves around your foot as you lace up, giving you a fit like no other shoe. Because it's physically connected to the outsole, you feel the ground in three dimensions. While the liquid factory process is completely different, the liquid speed shoe is tested exactly the same as every other product we make. Liquid factory is not just about a new way of making things, it's about a new speed of making things. With liquid factory, there are no molds, we can change product almost instantly. But liquid speed is just the first step. This is the beginning of a broad new menu of product development. This is Liquid Factory, and this is Reebok Future. So this is about a few one example. I mean, uh, which Adidas and uh, Nike, I mean, Reebok companies are going to be produced by using 3D printing. So we are having a lot of case studies. Just go through it. Hey Sean, you remember that video? So I am showing this all visuals is you may you, if uh, blindly I, I talk with uh, if I give the lecture with uh, a document or something you may not understand clearly if you are going to have the to create interest uh, what are the real time applications of 3D I mean 3D printing so what companies are there which are going to implement this particular 3D technology all these things you know, uh, you are able to know from this uh, particular visible visuals, video visuals. Uh,
Hello, people of the internet, and welcome back to the next episode of What is 3D Printing? My name is Lee. The build plan When a layer is finished, the platform moves down one layer height, and the sweeper blade recoats the cured surface with a layer of uncured resin. The light source then solidifies this new layer, and the process is repeated, slowly building the part up one layer at a time. Finally, after printing, the part is still not fully cured. If you're after the optimal mechanical properties for your part, you need to take it away for some post-processing under a UV light. But if you're not in a rush, you can put your parts in front of an open window and good old mother nature will do the job for you. Like I mentioned earlier, the two most common forms of vat polymerization are stereolithography, SLA, and direct light processing, DLP. Both technologies produce parts in similar ways and, at the end, the parts are pretty much identical. The main difference that separates them out is the light source that's used to cure the resin. So, SLA is famous for being the original. The technology uses mirrors in a similar way to SLA. However, DLP uses a digital light projector screen comprising of pixels to flash See, an image uh, the footwear companies are adopted this DLP technology. of each layer over the build platform all at once. As a result, DLP can generally produce parts faster than SLA. However, SLA is considered more accurate as the individual pixels of a DLP projector screen are sometimes visible on the part. Since these technologies are very similar and they produce parts which are almost indistinguishable, I'm going to use the term SLA for the rest of this video just to make things easier. So what are the important things to consider when trying to decide if SLA is the best 3D printing technology to produce your parts? After support removal and some post-processing, SLA parts have a very smooth surface, making the technology ideal for injection mold prototyping or visual models. Because of the small laser spot size and small layer height, SLA is perfect for designs that have fine intricate details, as well as parts that need a high level of dimensional accuracy. SLA technology is generally very scalable. Because the technology does not rely on heat to produce parts, it means that very large size printers can be produced with huge build volumes. It's not uncommon to see SLA printers produce full dashboards of cars or full-size bumpers. SLA offers a vast range of materials, each specifically developed for different applications. Whether you want biocompatible materials for the dental industry, investment casting resins for jewelry, or materials for transparent as glass, there are plenty of options to choose from. SLA utilizes photopolymers, which are thermosets, to produce parts. And as a result, parts are brittle, as we saw earlier with our hammer test. Because of this, the technology is typically used for prototyping and not for load-bearing or functional parts. The other downside to photopolymers is that they are UV-sensitive, meaning they degrade this in a moment, adds time to SLA. Support our part onto the build plate and allows us to print overhangs. It also fights against curling. Curling is the equivalent of warping in FDM. SLA support structures are printed in the same material as the part and need to be mechanically broken away or cut off once printing is completed. Support structures usually leave a mark at the point of contact, which means if you want a perfectly smooth surface, some processing is required. And that brings us nicely into point two, part orientation. The part orientation of your design helps determine the location and amount of support material that's required. As a rule of thumb, if your design has important visual surfaces, it's a good idea to orientate it in the printer so that these surfaces are not in contact with any support material. A handy tip when optimizing the orientation of your SLA part is to position the part in the printer in such a way that the cross-sectional area of all the layers is reduced by as much as possible. On 3D Hubs, we've made a handy tool that allows you to define the cosmetic surface of your part before sending your designs to the manufacturing partner. The manufacturing partner can use this information to position the part in the printer so that no support material will be in contact with the surface you have selected. Finally, the last thing to consider is hollow sections. They minimize the amount of material used, making parts lighter and therefore faster and cheaper to produce. LA, check out like in areas where high precision or specialized materials are required. Think 
in medical or dental industries. One of the biggest success stories of 3D printing is hearing aids, with 97% of all hearing aids <coughs> globally now produced via SLA printing. The whole 3D printing industry is now moving towards printers that can produce parts faster than ever before. The resin-based carbon printer claims to be able to produce parts 25 to 100 times faster than traditional SLA by continuously pulling the part out of the resin rather than printing one layer at a time. So let's wrap it up. What have we learned from this video? SLA is perfect for smaller parts. So this is all about the 3D printing. So your interest is needed to extend uh, the knowledge. So let me end the session uh, and go through the different designs go through the different resins which are going to be used, used for the photopolymerization. And companies, you have to identify the, identify the companies which are implementing the 3D printing, 3D printing technology. So this, by this talk, by this uh, words, I'm going to end this lecture. Okay, thank you.